At Tea Tree Gully in the Adelaide foothills, Angoves have been making wine since the early 1880s. But in 1974, this land was compulsorily acquired by the South Australian State Planning Authority to be subdivided for housing. And now the Tregrain vineyard is being harvested for the last time. It is a busy time for grape growers and winemakers alike. Vintage occurs from late February through to April. If the weather is kind, the days will be warm and dry and the nights cool. Warm, humid weather may cause downy mildew, a disease that can severely affect the size and quality of the harvest. Elsewhere, at its recently developed Nanya vineyard in the Riverland district of South Australia, the company operates mechanical harvesters. But here at Tea Tree Gully, as at most older wine producing areas, the grapes are still picked by hand. It is a tiring and back-breaking job, although not altogether without its compensations. The ripening of the fruit is followed closely by the winemaker. When the bome and acid levels are right, he will instruct the vineyard operators to begin the harvest. His measurements and the timing of picking are crucial to the production of top quality wines. From Tregrain, the picked fruit is transferred some three miles through suburban traffic to Angove's Tea Tree Gully Winery. On arrival, the fruit is weighed. Accurate records of the exact tonnage of fruit make it possible for the winery to estimate the volume of wine that should be produced. Winemaking today is a highly scientific and complex industry. At their Riverland operation, Angoves, like other main wine producers, utilize modern technology to the fullest. There, while the art of the winemaker has not disappeared, it has undergone significant changes, as science provides the winemaker with new tools and information to complement his skills. At Tea Tree Gully, however, most of the techniques and much of the equipment are those of yesterday, of rural rather than technological winemaking. After being weighed, each load of fruit is transferred to the crushing complex where the berries are broken open and the stalks, which form no part of the fermentation process, are separated out. For white wines, the grape juice is also separated from the skins and seeds. While for red wine production, the skins, seeds and juice are all transferred together into the fermentation vessel. The chemical reaction of fermentation converts the grape sugar into ethyl alcohol. This reaction is brought about by yeast cells introduced into the fermentation vessel and is obviously a vital part of the winemaking process. The total amount of alcohol produced depends on a number of factors, but mainly the amount of sugar in the grape. This is why ripeness and time of harvesting are so important. The color of red wine is extracted from the skins during this fermentation process. The skins rise and form a cap on top of the liquid, allowing the liquid itself to be run off below after the fermentation reaction has ceased. The skins and seeds are then left behind in the bottom of the vat. At Tea Tree Gully, these are then removed manually and transferred on wooden cylindrical cages to the pressing area where they are pressed to extract as much wine as possible. The pressing system here has remained virtually unchanged since its introduction in the early 1900s. The pressing cage is transferred by a rail system and positioned under the hydraulically operated press. is slowly driven down onto the skins and seeds, forcing out as much wine as possible. The wine produced in this way is called pressings. It is usually very rich in color and full-bodied, 
and although often lacking certain desirable characteristics, can be used with care to bolster lighter wines that may have failed to develop sufficient body and character of their own. With the acquisition of the vineyards by the state government, Angoves have been forced to wind down this winemaking operation at Tea Tree Gully. The historic techniques used here will all but disappear, but they won't be forgotten. This corner of South Australia's heritage will be marked by a tourist entertainment centre preserving the family's history and ageless winemaking techniques in a museum-style atmosphere.